thank you so much for joining me on the jessica brimer channel and i'd like to just share some thoughts with you today about nigerian leaders yes the protest has come and gone the protest didn't really achieve much but it achieved something it achieved something uh, you know because it it kind of unsettled the leaders they unsettled the people who say they are the leaders of Nigeria, but they're just heartless, heartless criminals. I've lost a lot of friends who said to me, you are an evangelist and you're not giving honor to our leaders. The Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. And my question is, where did the Bible say give honor to rogues and criminals? Where did the Bible say give honor to people who are being called rogues, thieves, looters of the wealth of the nation? by their own subjects, if I may use that word, by their own people. And they wear these, um, they just wear these insults like a badge of honor because they live up to the insults. The people are saying they are rogues and they're living up to the fact that they are rogues. Nigerian leaders are not dignified in any way at all. They lack dignity. And that's why they can never, ever treat their fellow countrymen with dignity. I told somebody, I said, look, I like watching people in London buses as the buses are driving people around or even in the trains. You look at the people in the buses and in the trains. They are so dignified because their leaders have decided to dignify them. You may not have a car. You don't need a car for you to travel around with dignity. That's what these leaders show because they are dignified people. Did you hear what Akbabio said during the protest? He said, while you people are busy protesting, we will just be eating. As in, we, we don't care. And this is the same God's will Akbabio that confessed with his mouth that he came from a very wretched, poverty-stricken background. Just like Buhari, just like Erufai, just like Tunubu, just like all these leaders, you know, who are leading Nigeria. People from very wretched background and they have no compassion whatsoever for the masses for the poor they have crippled the lives and businesses of people the masses are starving while they are living in vulgar display of stupendous stolen wealth nigerian leaders from top to bottom suffer a chronic inferiority complex it's not just about poverty mentality. It is a protracted low self-esteem. Otherwise, they would not, they would not steal the, the, the nation hollow to the point of rejoicing as people are impoverished. They take so much joy in impoverishing their own people. Tunubu says that he inherited a dilapidated economy. Yes, we agree. That Buhari ruined the nation's economy. Buhari's government stole so much from the people. Buhari and the people in, in his government. They stole so much of the wealth of the nation. And then Tinubu comes in and says, yes, I inherited a dilapidated economy. Then that justified his, his uh, uh, merry-go-round in just collecting loans upon loans upon loans. And these loans are being taking next change for the crude oil of the country. And as he's taking the loans, they are now spending it on themselves, not on the masses. They are spending it between Tunubu's uh, um, uh, presidency, the Senate, and the governors. Look at what the governors are doing to their own people. Even Abia state governor. I said to myself, that's a story for another day, that Alex Oti would refuse to pay the people the 35,000 naira extra Tinubu asked governors to pay to workers before they decide on the minimum wage. Pay everyone extra 35,000 naira. Alex Oti refused vehemently to pay. The day the press asked him, sir, why did he refuse to pay the civil servants of Abia State that extra 3,000 naira? You know what he said? He said, well, nothing has happened to the money. The money is in the bank. So you kept the money in the bank so to be collecting interest? How do these leaders sleep at night? And these are leaders that say they are close to men of God. Men of God are close to them. They are praying for them. They have their wives in their government. Yet, they have no compassion for the suffering masses. 
Up your state is a civil service town. And the money comes only when civil servants are paid. That's where the people in the market can earn some money. So everyone right now is impoverished and begging for survival. Some are just collapsing and dying in Abia State, just like in other states of the country. You saw, everybody saw how the civil servants fought for the OT administration. They locked up everywhere. They said, PDP, we don't want you again. We want Alex OT. Now, Alex OT is just following the footsteps of the PDP, if not worse. Oh, people will come to me and say, look, and now Alex Oti is doing this. He's paying pensioners. He's doing it. Why did he refuse to pay that extra 35,000 naira? All the billions governors are sharing with Tunubu because of the removal of first subsidy. Tunubu will give some to governors and say, look, pay the civil servants. Alex Oti will refuse to do that. And he wants, people want me to accept that Alex Oti that's spending up their state money just building roads. Building roads, is it not human beings that will use the roads? Is it dead people that will use the roads? Is it people that slump and die out of starvation that will use the roads? Let me leave that issue for another day. I just want to come back to Tinubu. Tinubu said, oh, he inherited a dilapidated economy. How do you inherit a dilapidated economy and you can use 21 billion naira to renovate the vice president's house? You spend 40 billion for the National Assembly building. Just the building. Some people say the money spent on National Assembly is about 70 billion because they use part of the money to pay for 160 million naira per each senator's uh, SUV vehicle. How can somebody inherit a dilapidated economy waste money in such a way? You use 4 billion naira to renovate the Dodon Barracks in Lagos? 5 billion naira? To presidential tax reform committee of less than 20 people headed by Taiwo Oyedele, and there's nothing for them to show for it. Tax reform, my foot. One billion naira, oh, 1.5 billion, yes, that's what they sent to purchase cars for the wife of the president, Senator Oluremi Tinubu. Despite the fact that First Lady's office is not recognized by the Constitution, and then a 300% salary increase for judges. Judges, why? Why would you do this, Tunubu? Why? Five billion naira budgeted for presidential fleet of cars, just for cars, mere contraption, just for cars. That's what the five billion naira would be for. Billions of naira, billions budgeted for the trips of the vice president, Kashim Shetima. All these to the detriment of the Nigerian citizens, and every senator is paid about 21 million naira monthly. Nigerian leaders are soulless and heartless. They are not just co fantastically corrupt, as the British Prime Minister said, as Prime Minister said. No, they, they, they are wicked. They, wickedness is their second nature. House of Representatives are earning 13.5 million monthly. And all these increase, all these billions I'm talking about, were done by the Tinubu government. All this waste of billions were done by Tinubu's government. And then... The big elephant in the room, 15 trillion naira for Lagos Calabar Coastal Road. He was awarded illegally to Tinubu's friend. The Shagoris that Obasanjo drove out of Nigeria because of their stealing is the people Tinubu brought back and gave them the 15 trillion naira Lagos Calabar Coastal Road um, a contract. Oh, yes. This government has the largest ministers ever in the history of Nigeria. So where are we sourcing the money to pay them? More loans, more IMF loans, more IMF loans. And then we created the Ministry of Livestock Development. Not human development, livestock development. The, the ministers in charge of poverty alleviation, in charge of, of taking care of the poor and the needy, are stealing the billions. And, and nothing is happening to them. Nothing. They use one month to map, up, map out Nigeria and say they have given poor people over how many billions. They pocket the money and lie and it's clear to everybody that everybody is on a stealing spree in this administration. Where is the subsidy money that was removed from petroleum products and electricity? It's only shared amongst presidency, senators, house of reps, and the governors. Just these few people are the people looting the economy of the nation. And then ministers and heads of parastatus and some palm sex. How much was saved? What was the money used for? The money we're talking about, the subsidy removal. The cost of governance is, it has increased so massively.
has increased so massively. Yet you're tasking the people the, to pay so much for fuel, to pay so much for electricity. Education is beyond the ordinary citizens, and health services are completely unavailable for ordinary citizens. Food stops, food stop. Ordinary gari, they used to say poor people drink gari. Now poor people in Nigeria cannot even drink gari. Drinking gari is now for the rich. Food stop is beyond the reach of ordinary citizens. Insecurity, killings every day have increased. You send bandits and terrorists to take over farms and forests and chase away farmers. And everybody cannot afford to go to farm anymore to fend for themselves. How heartless, how soulless can these leaders be? And these leaders have wives. Their wives cannot talk to them in the bedroom and say, sorry, what you're doing is wicked. Evil is too much. It's too much. Pontius Pilate's wife saw a vision and said, Sir, don't join them to crucify this innocent man. Why are the wives of our leaders not seeing any vision? Not talking to their husbands. Corruption, stealing of public funds is legalized. There's nothing wrong with it again. Nepotism is the agenda. Oh, yes. Yes. All the security votes of the president, the vice president, the governors, and, and, and every other person that's collecting security votes. Their security votes are intact. Nothing has happened to them. Yet, we have insecurity, stifling insecurity in Nigeria. Innocent blood flowing every day in the nation. As a minister of the gospel, I know that innocent blood brings a curse on a nation. Innocent blood cries out for vengeance and nothing good comes out of any land where innocent blood is being shed. So there's no point telling me, oh, Jessica, you say you're evangelist, you're cursing your nation. I'm not cursing. The nation is already cursing itself by shedding innocent blood and the leaders are supervising this shedding of innocent blood. There is no single support that any citizen of Nigeria gets from government. There is none. There's hopelessness, there's destitution, there's deception. Oh yes, all the government parastators, all they are getting richer, the leaders, the president, everyone they are getting richer, but the citizens are getting poorer and poorer. They are being taxed indirectly with high fuel consumption, high electricity that the people are paying for. They are being taxed, they are under a heavy burden. A heavy burden reminds me of the days, the days of the Israelites. In Egypt, that's what it reminds me of. This is terrible. This is horrible. It is terrible. I want to share a story somebody shared with me recently. And you, you understand what's going on in Nigeria. And you know that you must not support this evil. It doesn't matter whether the, the evil people are related to you or not. You must speak against it. And you must pray that the Lord God will dismantle this evil that is being legalized and mainstreamed in Nigeria. The story has it that a man came to the king's court seeking a job. The king asked him for his qualifications. He said to the king, I can tell you about anyone, human or animal, just by looking at people at the face. I can tell you who they are. The king was impressed and the king said, okay, let me try you, you know, be in charge of the, of the horse table. So after a few days, the king asked him about his favorite horse. He said, um, what do you think about this horse you're taking care of? The, the man said, the horse is not a good breed. The king was surprised. He asked the horse caretaker who revealed that the horse's mother had died at birth and the horse was raised by a cow. The caretaker said this, but the man that just came and took this job didn't know this information when he realized, when he just noticed that this horse is not a good breed. The king asked the man how he knew that the horse was not a good breed. He said the horse eats grass. It bends like a cow. Whereas a good breed of horse picks up the grass and eats with its head held high. The king was so, you know, pleased with this man's observation and skills. So he just rewarded him. He gave him some grains. He gave him chickens. He gave him goats and said, look, I'm going to appoint you to work in the queen's palace. So that was the promotion. The man started working in the queen's palace. After some time, he called him and said, what do you think about the queen? The man said, the queen has the, she has the manners of a queen, but she's not born into a royal family. Ah, the king asked the man, how did you know that the queen is not born into a royal family? The, the king's legs just trembled. 
Then he went to his mother-in-law and asked and said, what, what, tell me about my wife. The mother said that they adopted her when the, man's six, the woman's six children uh, died. So they didn't have their own child. Or rather, they had a child, you know, and the child died at six months. So they adopted this lady who became the queen, which confirmed what that man said, that the queen was not born a royal. She was not born in a royal family, even though she has good manners. And the king asked the man, how did you know? You know, the man replied, he said, a person from a royal family has a certain way of treating others, but this queen lacks it. The king was surprised again. He rewarded the man and said, at this point, I'm going to ask you to tell me about my life. What do you know about my life? The man said, I can only say that if you promise that you will spare my life. He said, I will spare your life. I won't kill you. Tell me. He said to the king, you are neither the king's son, nor do you have the manners of a king. The king was furious. But because he promised to spare the man's life, he didn't. He didn't kill him. He said, well... Then he went to his mother. His mother said, yes, actually, you are the son of a shepherd. You're not a biological child. The king was surprised. So he asked that man, how did you know that I'm not really a born royal? How did you know? The man said, when kings reward someone, they give the person jewels and riches. But you gave me goats, sheep, and them corn the other day like a shepherd's son would. The conclusion of this story is a person's nature is revealed through their behavior and their intentions, not by their wealth, not by their status. The Nigerian leaders think that you will now, people will now begin to regard them as somebody because of the wealth they have stolen, because of the status they have rigged themselves into. No, you, who you are is revealed by your behavior, your intentions and the way you treat people. So you are not leaders, actually. Leaders of Nigeria are not leaders. People in positions of authority, the governors, the ministers, they are not leaders, you know. They have just shown who they are. They are criminals. They are looters. They are heartless, wicked people. The only place you reward wickedness is in the, in the den of robbers. Is in the witchcraft coven. That's where you reward evil. They are rewarding themselves because they are evil. And what they are doing is not leadership. It's not in them to lead. They don't know what leadership is all about. The true character, the true nature of a person is not revealed through wealth. It's not revealed through stolen wealth. It's not revealed through status. It's not revealed through rigged elections. It's revealed through how you behave and how you treat people. So stop telling me to honor these leaders. They don't deserve any honor. The Bible says you give honor to whom honor is due. These leaders don't have any honor due to them because they stole the position, they stole the leadership stool, and they are stealing and stealing. All they know is stealing. All they have in them is stealing. By their fruits, you know them. They are criminals and rogues. And um, yes, the masses might be helpless, but God we we'll deal with them like he dealt with Pharaoh in Egypt. Thank you so much for listening to me up to this point. Share this message. Subscribe to this channel. And please give me a thumbs up. Give a thumbs up to this video so that um, the algorithm of YouTube will recognize it and spread it around. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you.